with some rain, we've had some lightning and some thunder. And as of this latest update from the Storm Prediction Center, we actually have a higher likelihood of seeing some severe storms across portions of Nebraska, Kansas, stretching up through Iowa, uh, extreme northwestern portions of Missouri. Now, the severe weather risks for some hail, for some damaging winds, but we also have that possibility to get some rotation within these storms. So you see it highlighted here our Torcons into tonight, through tonight, twos and threes, two different bulls eyes here one from Wichita Falls Texas stretching up through Oklahoma City and then one over that bullseye for places like Omaha and St. Joseph so the tour cons today at three means that severe thunderstorms are likely but a few tornadoes are possible you want to keep an eye on the forecast as we move through this afternoon and evening it is possible that a tornado watch could be issued and a reminder that watch means that you have all the ingredients you need the warning means that a tornado could be imminent and you need to seek shelter immediately so here Here's what's going on with our active weather this morning. A cold rain moving through Wisconsin. You've got some of that lightning and thunder going on. Uh, maybe some heavy rain at times, but I think mostly that is um, some ice that that radar is picking up on in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So as we move through the afternoon, we've got a cold front, but we also have a dry line and both of those act as focal points or trigger mechanisms to get some of those storms going. But the problem that we're going to have is that we have warm air aloft and that warm air acts as kind of a lid to keep those storms from really developing completely and getting as severe as they could be. So when you have that warm layer, it keeps those storms from rising. Now, if we're able to break that cap, you can have some really strong storms bubbling through. It's kind of like an eruption when they break through the cap and those storms really become quite potent. But it's that if they can break through the cap. That's the big question for later. So here's 7 p.m. this evening. You can see one of our highlighted areas. You're getting some of those cells bubbling up, maybe that wind threat or hail threat as we're heading into the overnight hours. A second round moving down into northwestern Missouri as well. And then you can see some of these storms moving through too. Now, with the cooling aloft, we also have that possibility for really large hail. So Dr. Postel, whenever you're talking about maybe baseball size hail in some of these places, if you have that option to park the car in the garage to not be out and about tonight, that's going to be your best bet because baseball size hail could really ruin your, your morning the next morning when you're waking up and going to work. And then some. I yeah. mean, it's terrible. I've been in baseball size hail before. It's terrifying. It can do a lot of damage. Felicia, yeah. thank you very much. You know, forecast elements coming together. Dr. Postel, thanks. Well, you've got a little bit of sun coming out to play in the Windy City today, just like here in our virtual view of Olive Park. But don't plan your picnic just yet, guys. Rounds of rain are headed your way with some stormy days ahead there in Chicago. So you want to maybe soak up the warmth while you have it, even if it is going to come with some rain, because by this weekend, your highs aren't going to make it out of the 40s. All part of this crazy pattern that we've got going on there in Chi-Town. So here's what it's looking like for uh, tonight. Upper 50s as you head through the nighttime hours. You've got some of that humidity moving in. By Thursday, upper 70s, some thunderstorms around, but still really, really warm. That by Thursday night, you see those temperatures starting to fall and you'll really see some colder air moving in for your weekend. The rain spreads across this region. Of course, we've been talking about the elevated rivers and creeks as well. So certainly going to add that to the river basins, generally about an inch, maybe one to two inches in some places. But that is a broad brush forecast and you could definitely see some locally higher amounts on the ground that's already kind of wet. This is where we have our flash flood possibility. We've got places like Kansas City as well as Des Moines up through La Crosse, Green Bay. Bay included in that. Here's our plume of rain that's moving through. Dr. Postel was just pointing it out. A bit of heavy rain here or there, but this is just kind of the first round. This is going to move through as you move through the day, lifting north, and then we see it becoming more filled out as you start to see those boundaries moving eastward. So we see that rain filling in across Iowa, eventually making its way into northern Illinois. Wisconsin, you're stuck in the rain for quite some time, and you see where we have our focal point of flash flooding possibilities as we head through Thursday into Friday, places like Madison, down through Indianapolis, Peoria, you're included in that. All of this rain continuing to move through, not just rain, but the possibility for a couple feisty storms as well. Friday, you're stuck in the rain in Cincinnati and, and in Indianapolis. And we've got that possibility for some gusty winds coming along with this as well. There's a, it's quite a dynamic atmosphere with this particular system with all the different things that we've got going on, Dr. Postel. To bring the severe. You falling, guys, and falling in a big way. Look at some of these totals that we can expect. 
fact, double digits up around the international border, 8 to 12 inches possible around cities like International Falls, Fargo, maybe 3 to 5 uh, for you. So this is adding to the snow that has already been sticking around. Now, we did have a big melt off with those really warm temperatures that we saw uh, over the past couple weeks, but we're going to add more snow to whatever is left. Winter storm warnings through uh, Thursday and then that winter storm watch going into effect Thursday and lasting into Friday as we'll see those rounds of storms moving through. Part of the problem is here, not only the snow that's going to be falling, you've got that precipitation moving through. It's filling in as it moves eastward, but you're going to have those winds gusting as well, which could help to reduce visibility and make travel a little bit more dangerous. Now, we only have a little bit of cold air with this system, but where we do get it, it's going to be enough cold air for that snow across the northern tier. So watch what happens. You can see this filling in as we move through the day today, overnight tonight and into Thursday. Rain, snow, places like Fargo where you're under a flood warning for uh, the Red River where you've got 18 inches of snowfall above average since March 1st. This is the last thing you want, but this is what you're going to get. And then you can see the blowing snow part of the problem and those cold temperatures. So Dr. Postel, you know, we are, are both the type of people who really love the warm weather. Mm -hmm. uh, we will take a beach day any day. Can you imagine it's late April and we're still talking about blowing snow, cold snow in general, but like true winter weather. So I can't imagine that because I lived in Madison, Wisconsin for about 10 years. Oh, and so you, you not only can imagine it, you've experienced it. I've experienced it. it and it's no fun. Given a warm weather lover and planting them in the upper Midwest is very difficult. Yeah. <laughs> it was a challenge, <laughs> no doubt about that. But yeah, I remember snow in May. Would you say the general consensus is, okay, we're over it? Even for Eventually, like the hardy like, Midwesterners? We get there, but it takes a little bit longer than it does here in the South. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'm there by January. <laughs> well, spring means it's time to get all dolled up for some by using the hashtag YesTV. We love to see them. Mm -hmm. There are other ways to ruin your beach trip, but seaweed will for sure ruin it. You know what else will ruin your, your beach trip? Going from like the 80s to well below average temperatures. So today, take a look at the, the difference between the temperatures where we have temperatures well below average versus where we have temperatures well above average. So it's kind of like a tale of the country being split in two and where you're cold you're colder than average where you're warm you're hotter than average mid 80s in places like OKC and Dallas Midland heading for 90 today mid 80s in Nashville meanwhile Jackson lower 80s there Atlanta mid 80s for you and a lot of these places are also getting the sunshine as well so it is really toasty out there for a lot of us now the record heat as we look toward our Thursday the forecast in Cleveland 84 the old record 83 so that would break that record set back in 1985 getting very close in Roanoke now Nashville also really close. Lexington 85 is your forecast and that would break a record set back in 1957. So it's not just a little warm. It is a record warmth by Friday. This cold air diving south with this dip in the jet stream. So it's going to bring some changes to us. You can see that temperature swing going from the 80s that we were just showing to 70s and 60s. Kansas City 60s for you 70s and OKC 70s in Louisville as well for your Friday. So you've got that colder air building in. Now by Friday the heat has pushed to the east. So Baltimore and DC your forecast is 90 for both of you and that would break the old record so you're getting the heat before you're getting the big cool down in Philly the forecast 87 that's really close to the 89 it's like if we're going to be that close to the record we might as well just break it right but some of us might not quite get there now by Sunday morning you can see another dip in the jet stream that's allowing that cold air to push a little bit farther south down through the Ohio River Valley so by Sunday morning you're waking up in the 30s in places like Chicago and in fact some of the great Lakes region won't even make it out of the 40s for this weekend. At Hidden Falls by the river. Beach vacations. Thanks for sticking with us on America's Morning Headquarters. Meteorologist Felicia Combs, Dr. Greg Postel hanging out with you this morning. Yeah, we're hanging out. And you know, tomorrow we have Reynolds. Tomorrow, Reynolds. We've been talking be about off us. camera when us three are together, <laughs> it's dangerous. You might want to set the VCR. You might want to set the VCR. Uh, uh, the VCR? That's what is that? Old. I don't That's know. What is he? Age alert. <laughs> Your DVR. The DVR. No, I'm kidding. I know what a VCR <laughs> is. Uh, but Dr. Posto, you know, we're, we're talking about the seaweed and everything, but we also have to look back to the west away from the seaweed and look at that possibility <laughs> for severe storms. No seaweed in parts of the Midwest today. I mean, not that we know of. Not that we know of, but yeah. we have a shot at a couple severe storms and maybe even a tornado or two. We do have Torcons here of twos and threes. They're going to squeak in there, but Dr. Posto is talking about where are they going to end up? So we focused on today, but we also have that risk Thursday and Friday 
Friday for some strong storms. Little Rock storms in your forecast Thursday afternoon, Thursday night and into Friday. Look at the way those temperatures drop. You're going from the mid 80s on Thursday to the upper 60s by Friday. Here's where we have our risk tomorrow from Poplar Bluff down through Little Rock, Dallas, Waco, Lufkin, all the way down to Austin, all included in that risk for some damaging wind gusts, some hail as well. We can't completely rule out an isolated tornado. As the system continues to push eastward, you've got that southerly flow of moisture and you've got two different lifting mechanisms in the cold front and in the dry line to get some of those storms going. You're going to get that daytime heating and that is going to help to destabilize the atmosphere as these boundaries are moving through. They act as kind of like a, a, a trigger to set off those storms and that's what you see happening as we head through Thursday and Friday. Here's our line of storms bubbling through the plains eventually into the Mississippi River Valley. You can see some of those storms certainly possible Thursday evening with some hail, some damaging winds. We'll have more on all of this coming up after the break. Never return home after the community is up and it up ended by significant storm damage. Yeah, and joining us now uh, to talk about how many families are displaced each year by weather and climate related disasters. Well, that's real quick. We got about 20 seconds or so. The price tag is incredible uh, in dollar terms. It's $165 billion last year. Do you think that number is going to grow over the next couple of years? So, yeah. Well, Dr. Shannon Van Zandt, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Executive Associate Dean for the School of Architecture at Texas A&M. Uh, amazing information. And again, thank you for all the work that you do. Of course. Well, our climate unit pattern keeps the discussion going about dangerous weather and its impacts on your neighborhood. Today at noon, here's a look at what's coming up. Just stick out your tongue. Uh, <laughs> the forecast for today around average, but the sun is shining uh, by Thursday, though. Those temperatures get above average. We should be in like the upper 50s this time of year. Yeah, so anytime we're around 60 in Boston, it's OK. Yeah, 64 is not bad. I'll take Thursday's weather. Take Thursday's weather. Uh, Sunday, though, that's when you have the best chance for rain there in Beantown. Indeed. And you know, my city pick of the day is Kansas City. That's what we deal with. Yeah. We deal with severe you, weather in the Midwest. You, it's Kansas. You know how to deal with it. Exactly. You know how to deal with uh -huh. it. Exactly. Like you got storms in the forecast a couple days. We do, but look at those temps. I mean, the 50s, we're coming back down in the Ooh, 50s. 29. I know. 29. The, the volatility for cities in the Midwest, including Kansas City, we are up and down and up and down a lot. You oh, have yeah. to get used to it. Eventually you get used to Eventually. it. Eventually. But you don't get used to the event like No, this, you can't. Right? It's all I will love, say they say that rain on your wedding day is good luck. So rain and wind maybe is like double good luck. Any wedding day is good luck. Isn't yeah, it? I, I mean this morning and she said uh, it poured on her wedding day and her and my poppy have been happy for years. So I'm going to go with that rain on your wedding day is a good luck. Uh, good luck. Charm. Good luck. I say any wedding day is good luck. Yeah, well, mostly I'd say. America's Morning Headquarters to get you through the mid-morning hours. Yeah, and you know, the Weather Channel is helping you plan for the big events ahead. We've got a whole bunch of weather to talk about. We've got some big storms likely coming for the middle of the country. Maybe some severe weather as well. This is an area outlined by the Storm Prediction Center mm -hmm. showing you that heads up. This is an update to the forecast. We've got now an area that's probably going to see some big storms yeah. in Nebraska, Iowa, and nearby Kansas. Just in time for people to be getting off of work, too, for some of yeah. us. That's a terrible timing. We also asked a guest today about extreme weather and how it's forcing people from their homes, you know, quite often there's so much focus on these storms right after they happen. Mm -hmm. And then we kind of not forget, but we kind of move on. And there are a lot of people whose lives are changed forever that have to kind of figure it out. I know that's unfortunate. So it's our job right, right. to make sure we don't forget. Right. And that's exactly. why we're here. And also speaking of not forgetting, we can't forget winter. Oh, I wish I could. We <laughs> want to forget winter, but it's hanging on across parts of Minnesota. I mean, look at that. I know. Just look at that. Meanwhile, some of us are basking in the 80s. Did you? We're, we're in Atlanta. Did you get out and enjoy yesterday's weather? I was on my balcony like all day. Yeah, it was it was beautiful here. So yeah. a lot of us are like, oh, it's perfect, but it's it's snowing other places. It is unfortunately snowing for uh -huh. those of us that want uh, warmer weather. Anyway, some are, you know, basically dealing with all kinds of stormy weather.